it's been impressed upon my heart to talk about this morning uh, uh, or to share with you. Uh, I, I'm going to call it the love series. And we're going to talk about the love test. And we're going to talk about things that we need to do as believers to share love, not only to one another, but even to our enemy. Wow. Everybody said, love your enemy. Love your enemy. I, I, I tell you what, I was going to tell you, look at somebody that you think is your enemy, but then you might actually do that. So I better not tell you to do that. So I, I think I'm just going to conclude what you're saying. I love everybody. Come on, I love everybody. And I trust God. So if you will, St. John, the third chapter, then verse number 16 would be our, almost like a highlighted scripture for us. The Bible says in St. John, the third chapter, and verse number 16, and we all know that scripture, right? For God so what? Love the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not what? But have what? Everlasting life. Let me give you a few working definitions. Well, maybe two. I'm just give you two. There's several I could give you. I just want to give you two, I think, and stick with what applies. The word love is agape. Everybody say agape. It is brotherly love, affection, goodwill, love, and benevolence. And another uh, uh, word for love that we're going to use as it applies to uh, this lesson that we're going to be talking about is love of brothers or sisters, brotherly love. In the New Testament, which Christians share for each other as brethren? That is the Philadelphia. Come on, say Philadelphia. I'm not talking about little Philadelphia over there. I'm talking about a love for, for brothers and sisters, a love uh, which Christians cherish as, as brethren. So when we look at St. John 3 and 16, and we understand what God did for mankind in that he gave. Come on, say he loved and he gave. It is possible to give to a person and not love them, but you cannot love and not give because love gives. Love does. Love itself, love in itself offers to something maybe perhaps they do not deserve or, or, or something within itself could be challenging, but you have to make decision to love. Come on, say, so I make the decision to love, to love, and then love like Christ said. Then Philippians, the Philippians 2 and 5 said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Now, if we take on the same mind of Christ, God so love. God so love. Say, say it with me, God so love. God so love. You know, a world so loved by God should accordingly be loved by us. If God so loved, and we let this man be in us that was also in Christ Jesus, then a world so loved by God should accordingly be loved by us. And this love will, will exert itself in earnest desires and prayers and attempts for conversions and salvation of yet uncalled blinded world. The uncalled or the unchurched and blinded world. This love does include all do love to enemies themselves. This love does include all do love to enemies itself. Remember the world, when translated in the uh, Bible, actually means enemy, enemy of God. God so loved his enemy. So this love that we should have for all mankind should also carry with it a do to our enemies. Sin you, and if you understand this, then the only way to to love your enemy, of course, is to purify yourself from purify yourself from all the lust, purify yourself from all the frustrations, purify yourself from all the opinions of this world. This world, the Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, uh, uh, being transformed, uh, therefore be transformed, uh -huh, and being not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind that you may prove what you're going to prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Now, we understand, we understand that when we start, when we transform our minds, when we transform the way we think and the way we operate for God, then the Bible tells us this. Now, we go back to Romans 5 and 2, 5 and 2, Romans 5 and 2. Romans 5 and 2 then tells us, by whom also we have access by what? Faith, faith. Because you got to ask yourself a question. How do I love my enemy? 
How do I love somebody that's done me wrong? How do I love somebody that's, that's mistreated me? How do I love somebody that's mistreated family members, loved ones, people I care for? Well, 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 by whom also we have access by faith. Faith coming by what, y'all? Hearing and hearing of the word. Word of God. Now, 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 so if we've got a word from God, which we do, which we do, and I'm going to share with you various scriptures own brotherly love. So we have access by faith into this grace. Grace, the supernatural ability of God coming upon our life. We can love our enemy just like God. Love the world. Anybody listening to me? You can love folk that hurt you and abuse you just like God loved the world. If you recall, the Bible said when he was on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father. They know not what? what they do. And then we saw, we saw Stephen there in, in the book of Acts, Lida, after being stoned, calling on the name of the Lord, said for his oppressors, forgive them. Glory to God. They don't know what they're doing. I, you tell your neighbor, say, you can do it. You can love just like God. But you got to do it based on the faith or the word of God that coming by hearing, glory to God. And once you understand what you heard, you have access. There's a door, there's an opportunity into the grace of God. Hallelujah. Into the supernatural ability of God to love and to care for men just like God would. Everybody said just like God would. I'm about to get off my subject because all of a sudden my mind went automatically back to a man by the name of Jonah. Well, you know what happened to Jonah? You know what happened to Jonah? Jonah had a word from the Lord telling him to go to Nineveh. Why didn't Jonah go to Nineveh? He didn't go to Nineveh because he hated the Ninevites. He saw no reason that God should save his enemy. He saw no reason that God should save those that are oppressed, those people that he loved. He saw no, it, no reason why he should go and conduct the revival. And God showed Nineveh all this mercy when Nineveh were their thorn in the flesh to his people. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He saw no reason for that. He saw no reason for that. So he got on a boat and he went the other way. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah was driven by hate. Jonah was driven by hate. Let me tell you what the word hate means. Webster defined hate as to have a strong dislike. Glory to God. A ill will for. A loath, a despise. It means to dislike. Ooh, glory to God. It means to dislike and wish to avoid. Jonah went the other way because he disliked Nineveh and he wished to avoid Nineveh. He shrunk from Nineveh. He, 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 he moved uh, 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 away from Nineveh because he despised Nineveh. Guess what? When Jonah was despising and hating Nineveh, he became hateful himself. Unpleasant, unpleasant and, op, and unobjectable. Unobjectable. Jonah himself could not see what God's will was in this issue. So he was unobjectable. So if, if on the latter parts of that book of Jonah, we find Jonah at the end of his great revival and Nineveh having repented and received the love of God. Jonah sits out under this great big old, uh, 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 in the desert and this wind comes and this uh, vehement wind comes and the sun beats down on his head and God creates this great big gourd overnight to protect Jonah. She showed Jonah some love, didn't he? He showed Jonah some love. And, and, and oh, wow, boy, I just heard something. God showed Jonah some love while Jonah was hating on somebody else. God showed him love while he was hating on someone else. And watch this, because what, 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 what's idealistic about this is in the midst of enjoying what God had provided for him because he loved him, Jonah continued to hate, despise, dislike, and avoid Nineveh. And so God allowed the goid that he made for Jonah's comfort to disintegrate. And Jonah got angry about that thing. And God said, wait a minute, Jonah. He said, you ain't got no equity in this. You've done nothing to build this. You don't even know where it came from. And you enjoyed it. He said, why would you be speaking against something you know not, not, not about? And Jonah expressed himself. And God said, just like Nineveh. He said, you don't have an investment in Nineveh. Those are my people. 
Those are my people. I made them. I care for them. I love them. Amen, somebody. And sometimes when you look at your enemy, when you look at your enemy, or you look at people that hurt you, or people that have wronged you, you forget they're still God's people. 